All right, so now to uh, keep working in the same direction to drop this up frame, I need to disconnect the rear drive shaft so that I can uh, remove it from the rear differential so that it can come off together with the uh, rear subframe. So I just marked the bolt with the gibbo, even though I'll be replacing that as well. And in this situation, I'm gonna use a dual power tool and uh, it really saves, saves a lot of time. This was impressive. This uh, impact wrench break, breaks away my lug nuts in a second. So these were really torqued. I am not sure what the torque spec is. I'll have to look it up after. Now we have to, we're gonna move on to, to the bearing. So this one has uh, two 13 millimeter bolts. I guess nuts. Powerful enough. I guess there is a little bit of rust. This is ready to come off now. Now this side can come out. All right, so I'm just uh, gonna place a. 16 millimeter wrench, and then it's gonna hit. Um, it's gonna stop right here, and so I'll be able to remove these bolts, or um, rather nuts, break them loose. All right, let's try this again. So I removed all the six nuts and now I'll just try to find a way to, to knock out those bolts. Maybe I'll just use something like this. So I'm just going with the breaking bar. Maybe I should just put the nuts on so I don't damage the threads. I guess I got one out here. Just repeat this process for all of them. The next step is going to be to separate the two parts. I think I might have made a mistake. And I uh, should have removed this part, separate these two, and there is actually a little notch where you can put a screwdriver or something, spread them apart. There is two one, there, one on each side. Finally, I was able to get it out just by prying on each side, and I think this is what I should have done at the beginning. And uh, this would have been much better, but. Uh, that's it now, my uh, rear differential is disconnected. Next step is to uh, mark the drive shaft, so you align it the same way once you change this bearing. And as you can see, it's pretty badly cracked. So it's time to change it, and uh, I got the new part here. So you just need to align it. There is this protrusion, so it's gonna go on this way, and now, I need to remove this bolt, even millimeter, and uh, then I can take the two pieces apart. So I'll get this 18 mil socket here, and uh, I'll lock it so that it doesn't move. So 
this is what it's gonna look like. And that's it. I did spray some PB Blaster on it previously, so now I can unbolt it. And after a few turns, you can just use your fingers to turn it. And now I should be able to separate the two parts. And finally, should have used a bigger hammer, but uh, finally separated it. Now, looks like I bent this piece, I can replace it. And uh, I might, this one will probably break, so I'll, I might have a puller I can use. All right, I got this puller on. I'm not sure if it's gonna come off because of the rubber, but I have to take off the rubber first. I need to grab it here, but I can, so maybe I'll just cut off this piece. It's just pretty, pretty hard to cut. All right, I have to get a bigger puller here. My goal is to have the rubber rip and the bearing come off, so I'm not sure which one will happen first. Alright, so I, I got this rubber ripped off. Now I can I need to grab this here. It looks like it might come off without the need of the puller. even on all sides. I might install the puller and try it with it. So I was able to grab it. I prefer puller over hammer, so if this works to get this bearing off, perfect. Now the issue I'm having, I started damaging the thread for the bolt, so I might have to just use the bigger puller so that it doesn't go doesn't screw in in that thread. So in this case, the puller bolt is big enough so it won't go inside the, the thread. So I'll try pulling it off with it. So the big puller just wouldn't fit. So I'm just gonna try to maybe pull it on the side here and not in the middle, see if I can pull it off. All right, it's uh, starting to annoy me. I'm just gonna use this adapter not to damage the thread and try to hook the puller on it. All right, another attempt. And finally, we got it off. Press this on. I'm gonna use a, a deep 32 millimeter socket and I'll be able to just hit that metal part, the inner bearing, and not damage anything else. So I'll use this old bearing just to put it like this on the floor and not damage this part. This one is pretty easy. I could, I could feel, I could feel it dropping down, and then when it hit flush, I could feel that just the change in the sound. I knew it was all the way in. So that's it. The, the new bearing is on now. All right. Before putting the two halves together, I want to address this uh, CV joint situation where I accidentally split it, split it open. I guess on the good side, I, I was able to regrease it, and um, so. What I did before I took it apart, the good thing is that I did put the marks on, so there's a little red mark. And I have one here as well. So this way, at least, because this thing doesn't come off, I know which way to put it back together. So this is how it's going back together. The only tricky part is getting it on. If you do misalign it, it's gonna be stuck. It's not gonna move at all, so. 
you'll know. Now the way I do it, I just peel off the boot and uh, it's a little tricky. This cage doesn't come off, it just stays. So you have to play with it, hold the bolts in, I mean bolts, and then try to get it on. And that's it. So I got it on, gonna add some more grease, but you can see how it moves. So if you don't align it properly, it, it won't move like that. So this is this is how you know about market before, and that's uh, that's a good way to do it. One thing I noticed is when I put it together, the marks are a little bit misaligned. The white and white here, and the gold one here as well. So I'm not sure if uh, that's going to be a problem. Um, I'm not sure why they're misaligned. Um, here's the plate. It seems to be moving pretty well. And then if you pull it out then it, uh, it still moves, it does bind a little bit sometimes and you have to push a little bit to, for it to move, so I'm not sure if it's normal or not, um, but in retracted situation it seems to move a lot better, but even then if I do a full rotational move it does seem to get stuck at some points, so I'm not sure if it's going to present a problem or not and if it's related to the slight misalignment on the cover. But I know that the balls are not off by one, if they are. I did try installing them off by one just to see what happens. It gets completely locked and doesn't move at all. And this slight misalignment is less, is a lot less than one ball off. So I know the balls are in the right spots. I'm not sure if it's the cage uh, that moves or what, but uh, this, is, uh, this is the best I can do. I cannot get them to align unless I twist. If I twist this cover and then what happens is the rubber twists, twists. so on, uh, the, the only explanation is that maybe it was twisted when I was disassembling it and now I twisted the rubber and that's why it's a little bit off and uh, other than that I'm not just just not sure if it's not it's not perfectly loose so hard to say um, I guess I'm gonna find out when I reinstall everything so I ordered a new dust cover plate just in case and that will get squished in here when I connect the other part of the drive shaft you can put a little bit of grease on the splines but you don't really have to and uh, I should have marked um, the area right on the spline would have been easier to align it but I think I can I can still align it. It went in so easy just because I think this is the right spot. So if you try to put it on the wrong spot, it will still go in, just not as easy. So if you even mark it, I'm pretty confident that I got it back just the way it was. And now I gotta install back the bolt and the washer and, uh, and tighten it. So you can just start tightening by hand and uh, once you tighten it enough you can move on to the wrench. To tighten it again I wedged the, I wedged the pry bar and then used the 18 millimeter wrench to uh, to tighten it and then once I did this dust cover plate is no longer loose it's uh, it's uh, nice and tight in there as it should be so this part is, is now done I did buy a couple of uh, parts here that I didn't use yet so I'm just gonna use the new parts just because I have them and uh, inside there there's another gasket that I got here so I'll just uh, swap them over out. Actually, I think this piece is, was uh, on this plate and just kind of baked on here. So I'll take it off and reinstall the new cover. I'm not sure where this gasket goes, but uh, there's nothing else underneath here. 
So once I cleaned the residue of the old gasket, I did pack some more grease because I did find that the bowls on this side, they weren't covered in grease. So I'm now gonna reinstall the new cover here. Actually, I thought it would uh, go in there, but it, I can't tap it in. It's just, uh, I think this is all I can do. And once I bolt it on, then it's gonna, then it's gonna stay there. Uh, I can't seem to be able to uh, do anything about it. What I did notice though, by packing grease on this side, this, this, this is a lot smoother and moves a lot better than before. So I'm happy about that. And I'm um, not sure what this gasket goes, I know it's not the same as this, the one that was on the, uh, baked onto the cover, because it does have this side, which the other gasket didn't have, so I'm not sure, I did install a new metal gasket on the inside on this side, so I'm not sure where this one goes, uh, but I think that's good enough now. I'm not sure if this is gonna work. All I can do is try... Oh yeah, once I clear the rubber piece, it works just fine. All right, I'm pretty confident this will take the bushing out now. All right, finally, I think it's coming out. It took, it took a lot of effort because these lamps they would move left and right and it's so hard to keep them even. This, this is what we're after. I guess I destroyed all the rubber inside but I guess it was sticking out this much out um, not sure if that's how it's supposed to be I'll have to measure the inside but um, based on what I see this is how it's supposed to go in I'm not sure if it can go in any deeper than that and this is what it looks like inside inside there is definitely more enough space for this whole bushing to go in all the way and then some, so I think I might just press the new bushing up until here, because that's uh, what it looks like it was meant to be. So the same thing, you just look uh, before you remove it and maybe mark it or see by how much it's sticking out. And then when you put the new one in, you leave it sticking out by just as much. Mm -hmm.